it just looks like gray. And remember, there's nothing in there. And remember, it's also got subtraction. But if you, if you were looking closely at the screen, you would see that there were a range of black spots and white spots. The black spots were subtracting out the cosmic rays but that happened to have occurred um, in the control condition versus the white spots, which are the, the cosmic rays that were then detected um, in, the, in whatever the, quote, intention trial or its, its control trial was. And this is just simply an amplification of that. The tiny little spots in the corner are slight imperfections in the chip, which, um, which were essentially constant. The, um, what we then did is, by the way, we, the, we use ImageJ software. How many of you, by the way, are familiar with the software? Anyone in this room? It is available free from NIH. If you go to Image, ImageJ and just Google that space, NIH, you can actually download the software. It is very sophisticated imaging processing system and it made it possible to do these analyses, which we couldn't have done otherwise. What we then do is we take those, because we're interested in the cosmic rays, which are presumably, quote, random, coming in through the, from the, obviously from, from quote, space. The, um, what we do is we then uh, do a min routine where we only accept those data points that are above 500 units using this, the camera's, um, 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 uh, amplitude system, most of the low light is within the range of 10 to 20. So what it does is it, it essentially creates a black image, but if you look very closely, you'll see the little white specks of the cosmic rays. And what I've done in the lower Im images is just amplify those with a sharpening technique so you can actually see what the pattern is. It looks like patterns of stars. Yeah. Okay, it looks like little patterns of stars. And the, um, they vary both in position and amplitude. Okay, and now the question we're looking at is, is there something in the, in the structure of those patterns? And the way that you can get at the structure of the patterns is to do fast Fourier transforms of the images, which the software does very conveniently. And so you just take this and you, you hit the FFT button, it's really nice how the software now works, and all of a sudden it creates a spectral image. Now if that, if it was purely random, you would essentially see just a cluster of, uh, of, of grayscales and there would be no centering of the, that information. But you'll notice if you look very closely, which is hard to do again on the screen, that you'll notice that there's a little blip more in the center and it actually makes somewhat of a line. And then if you do what's called plot profile analysis, which is just a simple procedure where you can have the software analyze each column of pixels. It's a 512 by 512 pixel array. It'll then average each of those 512 columns, and if there was nothing, if it was just an average pattern, you'd get a straight line or a slight squiggly line, and you'll notice in this particular one, it happened to show a curve, which meant there was some structuring in the, in the center of the FFT. And it was that kind of analysis that we then did, because this could be all automated. Now this is a complex pattern, um, and I'll just briefly describe it a bit. Uh, uh, because this is now a summary of the averaging of each of the individual FFTs for the, the upper right one is the, when the spiritual healing intention trials were given, minus its preceding control trial. Because remember, there were four trials. So you could either, so it's either three minus two or four minus three. It's the difference in those spectral arrays, averaged. And then you can see the, the plot profile to the right. And you'll notice that there's an increase in that, in that spectral peak. The one on the bottom is the same identical t sequence that timed, average all out, for the intention trial, the meditation trial, where the... Uh, the subject put his attention, imagined the stand, and, and focused his attention meditating on that thing. And you'll notice that it's a different pattern, and you'll notice it happens to have a, a lower part. And the other two are the matched control trials, the 16 runs of the controls, separately placed for the same set of analyses. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a pattern um, there that's sort of matching what the, the uh, other one does, it's not so striking in, that, in the second one there. When you then take all of this data 
average it together, and then look at the, the, the middle point where the, where the peak was, which is the, essentially the middle 56 columns in the 512, which is what we then focused our analyses on. This is the summary curve. And what it shows is that in the spiritual energy healing trials, you'll see that averaged peak increase. And you'll notice that for the focused meditation, which is that dashed line, you'll see each, it shows a slight decrease. It's slightly more, but not statistically so, than the slight little decrease that you see for the blank controls. And when you do the, 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 the appropriate uh, repeated measures analysis of variances on the, uh, analysis of variance on the data, um, it turns out the results were, were quite statistically significant. So what are the summary of these findings? The blank controls showed slight decreases in the FFT analysis of the cosmic ray patterns controlling for time. Focus meditation was comparable to the blank controls. The spiritual energy healing intention showed moderate increases in FFT analysis of the cosmic ray patterns, and these effects were significantly different, doing, comparing each with their respective, comparing the spiritual energy healing with the matched focus meditation of the blind controls. So what are the future research questions here? Well, of course, the number one question here, of course, is belief. You'd want to know if this is a, a replicable phenomena of causing an alteration in the, in the structural pattern of the, the cosmic ray data. Um, is this purely a healer belief? Does a healer have to believe in a higher frequency, higher power effect in order to get this effect or not? Of course, the answer is we don't know. Um, this was a, if you would, a proof in principle kind of experiment. Of course, the skill and motivation of the healer um, is important. Some of you may be aware that um, Dean Radin recently published a paper in Explore looking at the effects of of skilled meditators versus controls attempting to influence the uh, interference pattern in an interferometer. Um, we, by the way, now have borrowed his interferometer and are, are doing the same kind of research now also with, with spiritual energy healing and the whole question of the skill, because in his data, by the way, the skill mattered. And this person was clearly motivated. He had an intense desire to at least discover something. However, he was blind to what the specific hypotheses were. Uh, at least in terms of the cosmic ray patterns. Does the type of spiritual energy healing matter? Because some, you know, as I said, most focus on universal energy is focused, uh, is, is, uh, is sort of allowing it to occur, but some are just self-focused. It's my energy having an effect. I'm sending love to, the, to whatever the individual is. And then there's the whole intriguing possibility, which we, by, by the way, are looking at, is the, quote, spirit-assisted kind of healing tradition, such as John of God, where literally, and by the way, more than 50% of healers report that when they are, quote, in the flow, they are receiving some sort of assistance from what they call their higher guides all the way to the divine, but we have never brought that into the laboratory. You know, we, the collective we, and we're doing it now. And of course, then there's examination of other photon frequency bands. Now, I, I end with this uh, image here. It's a sculpture from Bill Worrell. It happens to be called I Reach to Forces Unseen. Bill writes poems for his major works. And in lectures that I give on the Energy Healing Experiments book, I often end with this poem. Um, I'm not, of course, I'm not going to take time to hear the poem here. But I do want to raise the following thought. Imagine for the moment that with these super sensitive cameras, with these new technologies, originally designed for looking into deep space and astrophysics, now being pointed inward, looking at living systems, and now looking at, at biophoton emission. And remember, the cosmic rays here were simply a, quote, artifact of the technology, but we could quantify it. If it turns out to be the case that we can measure, document, changes in patterns of, of, uh, of light, including high frequency light, that's associated with the human intention to involve spiritual matters. We may be, with this contemporary technology, opening up new areas of science. Because for the first time, we may be able to get a handle on quantifying something that's associated with these, uh, these kinds of effects. Um, 
and the technology he 